You know, last week I mentioned that I had gone to this art show and I had talked with some artists about putting business together with their art and trying to, okay. Well, that was only half of the story. See, I, I was taught this artist. I was, you know, remember, remember the food girl? She, she had this, she was eating meat and she, she couldn't keep it down and made a video of it. And well, cause her father was force feeding her meat. Well, I told her that I had this idea about uh, what I thought about homosexuality and what, you know, the, the cultural view. I mean, homosexuality is a cultural. <sighs> See, culture rarely addresses things as they are. Culture likes to address everything with fad anecdotes. You know, at first, you know, the response to the homosexual question is homophobia. And then now, well, it's okay. It's cool. You know, it just, we have these popular pop culture, it's cool, it's uncool anecdotes, but they don't, they don't help with stuff. And so I had my own thoughts about homosexuality. People think, you know, you, you, you violate these cultural taboos, you must be a homosexual. And in every country, those taboos are different. And so, you know, it's just like, how about, you know, Use your brain and stop trying to make people fit into your little cookie cutter, oversimplified simpleton worldview and acknowledge that there are many different types of people as there are people. And and don't try to throw people into categories. Don't try to throw labels on people just because you don't want to have to think. Uh, I just indicted most of us, including myself at times. But that, that's what the issue really is. And I wrote up this little thing about that. And I asked this girl, I said, this artist girl, I said, I'm thinking about posting this on Facebook, but I'm not sure if I want to. And what happened was, you know, I mean, she said, just do it. Don't, don't worry about what people think. And, and that was the story still as of last Monday. You know, I mean, I'm still talking about what happened last week on, you know, last Monday when, when all this went down. So I went home, I did the podcast, and I decided to post it. Well, uh, <laughs> the next day, there was this art competition where different artists drew different things. And this, this group of students basically painted the idea that I, I painted my idea. And that was their, their competition. Their, their, their competition entry was, I think, nine different artists, and they had these paintings about the size of a door, a large door rather. And they had in this, it was, I mean, it was, it, it had art deco stuff in it. It had art nouveau stuff in it, which you can use Google to find out about. I mean, you, you know, the curvy schmervy artistic naturey lines and that that's, that's borrowed from art nouveau, which is late 1800s. And then art deco is, you know, the, all the really cool basic shapes and the triangles and the circles and the, you know, you can look up Frank Lloyd Wright's art. Um, anyhow, we're talking early you know, 1920s, the geometric sans serif fonts um, art. So, but they, they had all this worked into it. And, you know, the latest thing is to put like cool circles and squares together with like viney looking art like that's the latest thing it's 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 a conflation of art deco and art nouveau is what that is and if you know what art deco is and what art nouveau is then most of the art that we see today will really make a lot of sense to you if you know there, there's lots of other types of art out there but just knowing what those are will be like okay i see this i see that and so many things just make sense um a, a lot of art i mean almost everything follows some sort of a basic idea that's already existing or it builds on an idea or it deviates from that idea or it very clearly doesn't follow those ideas. So there are ideas just like there are language and art follows those. Well, in this picture, they were putting art deco and art nouveau and anatomy like body drawing, which is very difficult all together. And it worked. It it was seamless. It wasn't compulsive. It wasn't, I'm going to do some art deco here and then I'm going to do some art nouveau there. I'm just going to put them together and it's going to look weird. It wasn't like that. It looked natural and real, but yet it contained these things. It was a brilliant piece. And 
on you know there was a man in the center and on one side they had this female spirit thing and the other side they had this male homosexual spirit and the female spirit was trying to seduce this young man or you know in the center this trying to seduce him through his body i'll just leave it at that and this is the natural body that he was born with and she's trying to to sexually seduce him and then this other this other masculine homosexual spirit on the other side of this man and all this is very abstract drawing it's not clear clearly in detail this other spirit has the homosexual rainbow thing and the young man has put a sex collar on like it's like that black spiky sex collar is what that is he has a sex collar that he's put on himself it put like himself enslaved himself and that that homosexual spirit is controlling him through that collar that that he can choose to take off and that was their painting and their idea and their, the point that they wanted to make was culture tells us you've got these two choices you can be totally sex crazy over heterosexual obsession or you can volunteer this is their idea you can voluntarily enslave yourself to uh sexuality that's not part of your physical body and and then become a, an obsessed slave to that in other words if you're not out there having lots of uh heterosexual sex all the time then you must be a homosexual because those are the only two options right and that was the message of their their piece their other and i liked it so i went home and i called my friend noah and i said uh you got more money than you know what to do with you're always looking for things to spend stuff on here's here's this art this is what i told him just what i told you and i said why don't you buy it i said i want you to buy it for about a little over 300 about, about just under 350 dollars, just shy of 350 dollars. i said i want you to buy it I think you should. Yeah, it would send a huge statement, at, you know, in the States and in Taiwan, where there, this is such a, I mean, all these people are railroaded, you know, into this issue. So, uh, so we did, we did it. I went back the next day. Now they didn't place other awesome pieces place, including the girl who did the meet. Like she was part of a semi Van Gogh type group that was doing a drawing. There were lots of awesome drawings there or paintings rather. And, and, other paintings placed for second and third, but this abstract one I, I described, it didn't place. Well, the students weren't even there that day. So I went to the people at the art show that I knew and I said, I want to talk to those students. They said, well, they probably won't come today. I mean, you know, they were kind of, you know, dejected. The art festival was still continuing, but they entered and didn't win. They didn't have class, so they just stayed home. I said, well, I'd like to talk to them. So some of the staff, the volunteer staff, the students, you know, running the art show, called them on the phone about 30 minutes later. They showed up. Now realize the, the art festival, the university is kicking off their art festival. It's a two, three week art festival. And they had a few soft sell days leading up to it. And then, but here they had the big ribbon cutting ceremony. So they do the ribbon cutting ceremony and everyone's all happy and they're all partying and the press is there and everything. And off to the side, these students show up who painted this. And I said, I want to buy it. And he started jumping up and down like it was, I mean, you know, you know how they do on the prices, right? When you win, you know, covering their mouth. <gasps> so they were excited. Well, just uh, today I went back and, and I don't know. We'll see where this goes. But I said, uh, hey, uh, we want to enter this in, uh, in the art prize 2018, possibly in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Maybe you guys should uh, go get a Kickstarter type dealio. And not raise money and go to America and paint there. Well, now, George, I'm going to have to leave it off there and get to the point. I guess we'll have to talk more next week. Brothers can't give each other justice. They just can't. No matter how much they try. No matter how much they want to. Brothers may be slightly older or younger, slightly bigger or smaller, but they come from the same stock, the same species, the same branch. They are very much alike. So much alike that what helps or hurts one brother has a similar effect on the other brother. Justice must come from above. It can't traverse brothers. For punishment or reward, opportunity or confinement, brothers can't find justice between each other separately. Brotherly justice can only be achieved together. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele jessesteel.com.